So in the previous video we saw that if we use an approximated signal m hat of t, which is a staircase approximation of the original signal. The original signal here is plotted in blue and the staircase approximation is plotted in black. If we use this staircase approximation, the FM signal will be divided into uh, uh, sampling intervals. Each interval the frequency will be fixed. And we calculated the spectrum of this FM signal. We found that it will be a summation of sinks. The maximum sink will happen or will be centered at FC plus KF over 2 pi M peak, the peak of our signal. And the first zero will happen at the distance of 2B after the center. The lowest sink will happen at FC minus KF over 2 pi M peak. And the first zero to the left will happen at the distance 2B. And then we said that now between this zero and this zero, this is the bandwidth, the effective bandwidth of the FM signal because we can ignore anything that will happen after this zero and anything before this zero. So the bandwidth will be effectively from this zero up to this zero. Let's calculate now this bandwidth. The bandwidth here will be the difference between the position of the zero, which is FC plus KF over 2 pi N peak, this is the center of the thing, plus 2B minus the position of the zero, the position of the zero is FC minus KF over 2 pi N peak minus 2B, FC minus KF over 2 pi n peak minus 2 b. If we subtract the this zero minus this zero, fc will cancel and the other two terms are going to add. So we are going to get 2 multiplied by kf over 2 pi n peak plus 4 b, which can be written as 2 kf over 2 pi n peak plus 2 b. What is KF over 2 pi MP? We saw it in one of the previous videos. We call this factor, we call it the frequency deviation. We call this delta F, the frequency deviation. When we studied the narrow band FM, we called it the frequency deviation. And we said that KF over 2 pi MP is the maximum deviation from the center frequency, from the carrier frequency of C. And this is clear from this figure. The maximum shift the maximum shift from the carrier frequency this is delta F which will be the difference between the center here and the center the center of this thing and the center of this thing which is KF over 2 pi MP right? so this is called the frequency deviation which is the maximum shift from the carrier frequency from the center uh, frequency this is delta F, that's why we can write that's why you can write this as 2 delta F plus 2B. And this is now the bandwidth that we reached at for our FM signal. But let me ask you a question. After we reached to this bandwidth, this bandwidth was based on based on M hat of T and not M of T. This is based on the staircase approximation value. So let me ask you a question here. Do you expect that the actual value that is based on M of T, based on the original signal M of T, not on M hat of T, do you expect that the original or the actual value that is based on M of T is larger than this or smaller than this? Take a moment to think about it. The answer is the actual bandwidth that is based on the original signal in blue, M of T, must be smaller than this bandwidth. Why? Because M hat, the staircase approximation, it's a signal that has sharp edges. And these sharp edges, always, any signal that has sharp edges will result in larger bandwidth. Any sudden change, any sudden change in the signal leads to larger bandwidth and this is a rule that you as an engineer you should keep in mind any sudden change in your signal it will lead to large frequency
frequency components, larger bandwidth. Why? Because sudden change here, this rect, for example, instead of having a smooth signal, it led to a rect signal, and this rect signal led to a sync function in the frequency domain, and this sync function has infinite bandwidth from minus infinity to infinity. This is because of the sudden change in the signal m hat. While m is a smooth signal. When the signal is smooth, usually its bandwidth is smaller than the signal that has sharp edges. So you expect here, you expect here that because of the sharp edges of m hat, these sharp edges will lead to a sudden change in the frequency of the FM signal, as we see here. It was a certain frequency and suddenly it will change to another frequency. Sudden change in the frequency will lead to a bigger bandwidth. So you expect that the actual bandwidth that is based on M of T will be smaller than this. So the actual bandwidth is expected to be smaller than 2 delta F plus 2B. Let's verify this. Let's verify this. When we started the narrow band FM, we assume that, let's go back to the narrow band FM. For the narrow band FM, we assume that delta F was, or the condition, if you remember, the condition was delta F is much smaller than B. And the bandwidth was, for the narrow band, what was the bandwidth for the narrow band? It was 2B Hertz. Let's apply this here. If we assume, here, if we assume, if we assume that delta F is much smaller than B, in this equation that we reached at, then you can ignore delta F with respect to B, what you will get is, you will get 4B, the bandwidth will be 4B, instead of 2B. So when we started the narrow band FM, we reached that, under this condition, we reached that the bandwidth should be 2B, and we had no uh, problem there. It was very clear proof, we didn't use another signal, it was just, it was the same signal, but we ignored some terms, right? But here we are using another signal, and we found that if we do this approximation for the narrow band, instead of getting 2B, we are going to get 4B, which confirms our thinking here that we expect that the bandwidth that will result from this equation is bigger than the actual bandwidth, or that the actual bandwidth is smaller than the bandwidth that we obtain from here based on M hat. That's why a scientist called Carson, he started to do some experiments, and he said, we need to adjust this expression a little bit. And he did some experiments, and he adjusted this expression based on the experiments that he did, and he found that a more accurate equation for the bandwidth a more accurate equation for the bandwidth is 2 delta F plus B and he said that this is experimentally a more accurate equation than this equation so he removed the 2 from here and now he said now if we Consider the narrow band FM as a special case of the wide band FM. Now, if we assume that delta F is much smaller than B, this will result in the same result that we obtain from the narrow band, which is the bandwidth will be 2B. So, Carson's rule, this is what we are going to call now Carson's rule. Carson's rule, and this is the rule that we are going to use to calculate the bandwidth of wide band FM and as we will see also wide band BM so Carson's rule says that the bandwidth now of the wide band FM is 2 multiplied by delta F plus B this can be written in another form which is 2 B, if we take B as a common factor, 
Beta plus one, where beta is called the deviation ratio, delta F over D. We call it the deviation ratio. This is the ratio between the uh, maximum frequency devi deviation and the bandwidth of our original information signal. So you can use either this equation or this equation, both of them they are the same. But if you are going to use this equation, you have to know the meaning of beta. Because beta is a very important parameter, the deviation ratio. And beta can be used now to tell whether you have a narrow band or wide band. For example, if delta f is much smaller than b, which is the condition of the the condition that we use for narrow band, if delta f is much smaller than b, this means that beta is much smaller than, than 1. And this will cause that you have narrow band fm. So if beta is much smaller than 1, this means that delta f is much smaller than b, which is the condition for narrow band fm. Otherwise, otherwise, this is wide band fm. So we can use beta, we can use beta, which is the ratio between delta F and B to determine whether we have a narrow band FM or wide band FM. So now, after cal we obtained Carson's rule, this is the equation that we should use in order to calculate the bandwidth of the wide band FM. Either this equation or this equation, both of them are the same, but if you are going to use this equation, you have to know the meaning of beta. So, so far we talked about the wide band FM. What about wide band VM? For wide band VM, as we said before, when we move from FM to EM, that was the equation for the FM, if you remember, A cosine omega CT plus KF A of T, where A of T is the integration of M, and the PM was A cosine omega CT plus KP M of T. So what are the changes needed when we move from FM to PM? We need to change KF with KP. This is the first change with KP. What else? We need, if you have A of T, you need to change it with M of T. And if it happens that you have M of T, like uh, the frequency in FM is proportional to M of T, the frequency in PM will be proportional to M dot. So these are the changes that you need to do if you want to move the equations from FM to PM. So now we calculated the bandwidth of FM. And by the way, this equation, we calculated it for wide band FM, but it fits all. It fits wide band and narrow band. For example, automatically if beta is smaller, much smaller than one, the bandwidth will be now you can ignore beta with respect to 1 and the bandwidth will be 2b. But if beta is not much smaller than 1, this will be the bandwidth. So this equation, although we derived it for wide band, but it can be used for both wide band and narrow band. Automatically, if your signal is narrow band, it will give you 2b. So this equation fits for wide band and narrow band. Okay? Let's see for pm. For pm, how the equation will look like. So for PM, for phase modulation, let's do the changes. If we look at the equation of the bandwidth, it's to delta F plus B. Do we need to change anything? Delta F, delta F, delta F doesn't exist in this list, B doesn't exist in this list. So we are going to write the equation as it is. And also we can write it as 2b beta plus 1. Beta doesn't exist in this list. B doesn't exist in this list. So no change so far. 
So how come FM and BM, they have exactly the same equation? Yes, they have exactly the same equation. But the way you calculate delta F will be different. How? Delta F here in the FM, delta F in the FM can be calculated as, what is delta F? Delta F here is KF over 2 pi MP. While delta F here, delta F in the PM will be instead of KF, it will be KP over 2 pi. And then instead of multiplying by n peak, it, you multiply by n dot peak. Because if you have n, you have to replace it by n dot. So you replace it with n dot peak. So in PM, this is how you calculate the delta F. It's kp over 2 pi n dot p. This is the only difference. While there, huh? delta F is kf over 2 pi n p. And just a small fine thing, because some people they do this mistake, especially in exams when they are uh, nervous or something like this. How do you calculate m dot p? How do you calculate m dot p? You have first to calculate m dot of t and then find the peak of it. Okay? Because some people unfortunately they calculate n peak first, which is let's say 5 volt, and then they take the differentiation, it will be zero, right? <laughs> but this is wrong. This is wrong. You don't take n peak and then you take the differentiation of n peak. No. You take the differentiation of n first and then you calculate the peak of the derivative. Okay? This is I know this is very amazing, but Unfortunately, I find some students, they do it, especially in exams. So, basically, Carson's rule, the bandwidth of both PM and FM can be calculated using the same, same equations. However, how you calculate delta F? This is the only different thing in the equations. Here, delta F is calculated as KF over 2 pi mp. Here, delta F is calculated as KP over 2 pi m dot P. We'll stop here in this video and we'll see you in the next video.